So this week we've been working on tools to help us figure out the different parts of probability. Remember, there are two parts to theoretical probability. It's the number of ways the event could happen over the total number of possibilities. Today we're going to go right back into our discussion of probability. You have here definitions and examples of events that are independent and dependent of each other. For independent, obviously think that two events where one does not affect the other. Okay, so for instance, if we've got uh, two marbles in a bag, if I take one out and then put it back, if I take it out and put it back, there are still two marbles in the bag, I haven't changed anything with regard to how many possibilities there are. Um, you think of it this way, if I flip a coin and I spin a spinner, what I flip on the coin has no effect on what I spin on the spinner. One thing I want you to highlight as far as how this is calculated, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the probability of each event individually. So in our example of the spinner and the, uh, the coin, I would find the probability of the, for the coin, I'd find the probability for the spinner, then I would multiply them together. For those of you who were with me for workshop, this is something we, we talked about. Um, for our definition, one thing to highlight here, two events are independent if the occurrence of one event, or so, in other words, if one event does not affect what happens for the other, the probability of the other event. Now, dependent on the other hand. This is where it does one event does affect the other effect, or the other event. For instance, if we go back to our example of the marbles, if I take, if I have two marbles, and I take one out, but I don't put it back, that makes that makes it so now the total number of marbles in the bag has changed. So therefore, the probability for the second marble I draw has been affected by what I did the first time. Okay. So notice though, the way we calculate this has not really changed. I still find the probability of each one and then multiply, okay? However, now it's the probability of, of the second event after the first event has happened, okay? A couple of, uh, of key words to watch out for. This is really important stuff here. This is really going to help you, help you when you're trying to figure out um, whether these are independent, dependent events or just two uh, mutually exclusive events or two events that are just happening together. Um, so... If you see the words and or both, typically that means multiply. If you see, change colors here, if you see the phrase or, that means add. Or means you're taking two things and you say, okay, this could happen or this could happen. But if I say both things have to happen, you think of a Venn diagram. If I say or, no, that means this thing could happen or this thing could happen, okay? Either way, notice I've added these two circles together. If I say and, if I say this thing has to happen and this thing has to happen, notice how much smaller that is, okay? That's what we call the union of those two things, okay? Uh, so and means multiply or means add. First thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about how we determine whether or not two events are uh, independent or dependent, okay? Um, pause the video here for a second and see if you can identify these. Which ones are independent, which ones are dependent? All right, rolling two sixes in a row. Uh, really, what you roll the first time doesn't affect what you do the second time, so that would be independent. Drawing the names of two brothers out of a hat. Well, whoever I draw the first time, that's going to affect who I draw the second. So in other words, if I draw, uh, if I draw my name, then you would have to draw my brother's name. Whereas if you drew Mr. Linder, that would be a, a different person that I would have to draw. It's a little confusing, but who you draw the first time affects who you have to draw the second time to, to be able to pick a brother out. Okay, so that's dependent. Drawing a red and then a green piece of candy from the same bag. Well, if I draw that red out, okay, it doesn't say that I put it back. So we have to assume, if it doesn't tell us that, this is important, if they don't say you, you put it back, you have to assume you didn't put it back. Especially candy, why would you put candy back? Um, so that's dependent. Because if I take the red out, that affects the total number of candies that are in the bag. Rolling a pair of sixes on two dice and flipping heads on two coins. Rolling a die and flipping coins, no effect. Select a card. Put it back, then select another card. Well, if I draw a card, 
let's say it's a deck of 52. If I draw a card, put it back, I still have 52. Those are independent. Now, if I select a card and I don't replace it, this whole concept of not replacing it, that's going to be, if I don't replace it, that's going to be uh, dependent. Spin a spinner once, spin it again. What I spin the first time is not what I have spin the second time, so that's independent as well. Okay? All right, just to get the math here, okay? Uh, notice the keywords here. Here's and, here's or. Assume that they're independent events. Well, A is 0.6. B is 0.25, so for the probability of A and B, we're going to do 0.6 times 0.25. Pull out your calculator. And that's 0.15, 15%. Now, notice the difference when I do or. Okay, that's 15%. When I do the probability of A or B, so in other words, A could happen, B could happen, doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to take the two probabilities, add them together, and I get 0.85. 85% this time. That's a big difference. Notice 15% to 85%, it's a lot more likely that A or B will happen, as opposed to both things happening. All right, down here, you notice this problem was not written by me, okay? This person has an 80% chance of going to a movie this weekend, a 50% chance of her son cooking her dinner. What's the probability? Here it is. I want you to highlight this part, some of these problems. You have to look at what the question is asking. It wants the probability, okay, that I will go to the movies and son will cook dinner. So notice this word and tells us I've got to multiply. So I'm doing the probability of movie and dinner. I just take these two these two percents. Now, percents, I gotta change the decimals before I multiply. So 80% chance for movie, 50% chance for dinner, 0.8 times 0 0.5, 0 0.4. 40% chance that both things will happen. Okay? That's the basic math. Let's dig into a couple more difficult problems. All right. This is an oldie but a goodie. We're going to deal with fractions now, all right? So we have a box that contains five Mike and Ikes, two sugar babies, three good and plenty's. First thing we need to do, let's do five plus two plus three, ten total pieces of candy, right? If Sarah randomly selects two boxes, what is the probability they will both be Mike and Ikes? So probability two Mike and Ikes, okay? Now, if she's selecting two boxes, notice it doesn't say she takes one box out, puts it back, and pulls another box. So, what that means is we have to treat this as kind of two separate events. Think about what's the probability that the first box we might get out. Well, that's five out of ten. Now, think to yourself. You're holding a box of Mike and Ike's in your hand, or Sarah's holding it. There are no longer ten boxes of candy or in the bag. Now there are nine boxes. How many Mike and Ikes are in the bag? Well, there are no longer five. Now there are four. So I have four here. So it's five tenths times four ninths. Let's multiply the fractions. So you can either multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, and then simplify. Or remember, I can take two out of here. This becomes two. This becomes five. I can simplify my, my five over five becomes one over one. And then this is one times two is two. 1 times 9 is 9. So the probability of two boxes being Mike and X are two nines. All right, this one's interesting. Garrett randomly selects two boxes. What is the probability they will all be the same kind? Now, there's three ways that could happen. I could get two Mike and Ikes, or, keyword there, two sugar babies, or two good and plenty's. So we have to go through this three separate times, okay? So the probability of the same is going to equal these three probabilities together. So the two Mike and Ikes we've already done. That's 5 tenths times 4 ninths. We'll go through the math later. Or, I should jump out at you. That's a plus. Two sugar babies. All right. So I've got two boxes of sugar babies to, be, to begin with, okay? Now, this is a separate problem. 
Once I've done this, I assume I'm back to 10, because these are two different things, right? I wouldn't draw two Mike and Ikes, then go back in and try and get two sugar babies, okay? They're two separate events here. So for these sugar babies, I start with two out of the 10. I'm holding a box in my hand, which means I only have nine left. And I only have one box of sugar babies uh, in there as well, all right? One more step, plus two good and plenties. Well, we start with three good and plenties. That's three out of 10 times, okay, two out of nine. Notice each number went down, but only because I'm drawing the same number out. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my simplifying here. Remember, this was uh, five, and this was two, and then these canceled. So this was two ninths plus, all right, this can be one fifth. One times one is one. Five times nine, 45, plus this two and this 10 can simplify. Three times one is three. Five times nine, 45. Okay, oops, I missed one, but that worked out, didn't it? Because to simplify, or to add fractions, I need common denominators. So it looks like my common denominator here is going to be 45. So multiply this by 5, this by 5. So that's uh, 10 40 fifths plus 1 40 fifths plus 3 40 fifths. The math is not hard here, it's just long. So 45 is my denominator, and then 10 plus 1 plus 3, 14 40 fifths. That's my probability that I would have the same, okay? Before you get completely overwhelmed by that, don't worry, most of the problems are not that hard. Let's take a look at some independent events, okay, that you will flip a coin and have it land on heads. Well, what I flipped the first time does not affect what I flipped the second time. So if I flip uh, two heads, well, the first time I flip it, that's one half, right? One head out of two sides. So for the first flip, that's my probability. For the second flip, that's my probability. That's one fourth. Three times, three heads. First time I flip it, one half. Second time I flip it, one half. Third time I flip it, one half. One times one times one. Two times two times two, one eighth. Five heads in a row, you get the pattern here. First time, first flip. Second flip, third flip, fourth flip, fifth flip. They're all one half. It doesn't change based on how many times I flip it. But I do have to multiply each of those out. This gives me one out of 32. Okay? Independent events are pretty easy. All right, two speakers are needed for a school assembly. Three, two girls and three boys volunteer. So a total... Let's get our total number of possibilities. We have five volunteers. Their names are put in a hat. One name is selected and not replaced. I want you to highlight that. Right there, that tells us this is dependent events. First step, is it independent or dependent? Find the probability that both are girls, G and G. Well, the probability that the first is a girl is two out of five. Times. Now I no longer have five volunteers to choose from. Now I have four volunteers. I also no longer have two girls to choose from. Now I only have one girl to choose from. So that's one fourth. And now I can do my cross simplifying here. One times one is one. Five times two is ten. One ten. For your, uh, your quick check tonight, it's going to be to go to the book. And you're going to turn in the book work so you're not submitting your answers on blended schools. Refer back to the notes, guys. Make sure you use this stuff as you work your way through uh, the problems in the quick check. Tomorrow, we'll be working with these same concepts in class uh, to make sure that you uh, have a firm understanding of independent and dependent, dependent events. Good luck.